God bless you. Betty, God bless you. God bless me. God is not like man. Good afternoon. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. He's omnipotent. I'm just going to share this on my page and the groups. God bless you. Good afternoon. Amen. Amen. Bless me. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraged. Good morning. God bless you. We are in day 14. Let's just worship the Lord with this song. Today we're asking the Lord to bless us. That he soon will bless me. He Lord bless me. Somebody just say, Lord bless me. Lord bless me. Good afternoon. Bless me. Hear me, Lord bless me, bless me, Lord, Father bless us, Father today we need your blessing Lord, hallelujah. God bless you, Echo. God bless you. Father, let your favor be upon us. No man can take my blessing from me. Bishop Justice, thanks for joining us. Father, let your favor be upon us. Father, we say bless us. Yes. Elizabeth, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Father, let your blessing be upon us. Hallelujah. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. We bless the name of the Lord for day 14 of our 30 days fasting and prayer. I know the Lord has been with Dubai. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. I just want us to lift up our voice and thank the name of the Lord. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the living God that you and I are in his presence. People of God, I do not take life for granted. I do not take the gift of being alive for granted. And I know you and I know that the breath that we have, it is God Almighty that has given it to us. Just open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for you cause us to come into your presence. Victor, thanks for joining us. God bless you. Just bless the name of the Lord, the one that has the final say over your life, the one that has given you breath, the one that has given you his, his salvation, the one that has caused you to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. Just lift up your voice and say, Lord, I bless you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I glorify for your name. King of glory, I say you are worthy. King of glory, I declare your majesty. King of glory, I declare your lordship. Father, over my life, over my family, over my career, over all that concerns me. Somebody open your mouth and worship the Lord. You know, I say prayer jumpstart is DIY. We all have to pray. If there is a man or a woman that can pray, there is a God that can answer. If there's a man or a woman that can pray, I'm telling you, your situation is bound to turn around for good. Somebody open your mouth and worship the Lord. Thank him. <clears throat> 
Say, Lord, I thank you. I worship you. I bless your holy name. Yes, Lord. I know that the things you have not done, you are still going to do it. Lord, I thank you. I bless you. We thank you for this day 14 of this 30 days fasting and prayer. Lord, we thank you for causing us to come and worship you. Lord, we thank you because today, oh God, you're going to speak a word into our lives. You're going to speak a word into our destiny. You're going to speak a word of transformation. You're going to speak a word of healing. You're going to speak a word of deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we know that even today, you're going to strengthen our prayer altar. As many that are coming on, those that are going to watch after this program is on, Lord, I pray. As many who are yearning and saying, Lord, heal my life. Heal my life spiritually. Lord, I have fallen. Lord, I'm no longer, I'm, I've lost my first love. I've lost the hunger and thirst I used to have in the presence of God. I've lost the joy of my salvation. Lord, I pray that today there will be spiritual healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray as many that are crying out in their closet saying, Lord, things are the way things are in my life. I need a change of story. Lord, because you're omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, because you are the God of all flesh, the one in whom there is nothing too hard for. Lord, we know that today you are going to do a work of miracle in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, God, we bless you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We exalt your name. We glorify your name. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Somebody exalt his name. Somebody say, Lord, I worship you. I exalt you. I thank you. I thank you. Mighty God, I exalt your glorious name. You are worthy. You are worthy of my praise. People of God, open your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. Bless him because he is good. Bless him because he's wonderful. Bless him because he's glorious. Bless him because he's, he's a faithful God over your life, over your destiny. Mighty God, we come in one accord. We come in one as a body and we say, Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you. We bless you. We say, Lord, you are worthy for healing all our diseases. We say thank you for delivering us from the snare of the fowler. We say thank you for giving us breath. We say thank you. Mighty God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We say, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for this season of our life, for this season of our destiny. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we bless your holy name for the invisible battles you fought for us, for the battles you took control over, even things we didn't know the enemy threw their darts at us. But Lord, you cocooned us, you shielded us, you protected us. Mighty God, we are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. We we say be magnified in the name of Jesus. We say be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oye, thanks for joining us. Blessing Oye, thanks for joining us. Pastor Marvin, thanks for joining us. Yesterday was awesome, awesome. I'm going to download your message and put it on YouTube because it answers and brings clarity to a lot of things. May God continue to bless you, man of God. May God continue to increase you. May God continue to give you boldness to continue to speak as it should be because it is the truth that we know that will set the people of God free. Vando, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for join, joining us. People of God, today we are looking at prayer methods. And it's all in my book, Prayer Jumpstart. I know people say, oh, I'm a Christian. What is prayer methods? I'm here to tell you that because we are, we are people that go out and we reach out to people and people give their lives daily, you'll be surprised how many people that don't know what, what is the method of prayer. What When you say prayer method, what do you mean by that? How can I pray? What are the methods in which people pray? You know, these things may look basic, but they are very important that we know. Like I say, this book, Prayer Jumpstart, that is a book the Lord put in, our, in my heart to write by his spirit. It's a book that a day old Christian can pick it up and they, will, and they receive strength and know how to pray and know the basic rudiments in the place of prayer. So the glory of God is being translated in 
in Swahili, in India, it's being translated as well, so that, you know, some of us that are in Europe, that are in overseas and countries like this, we are overfed with the word of God. We have so much um, so much freedom. There's so much word. You can go to Google and learn a lot about the things of God. But in some of these nations, like Face of Joy International, the Lord sends us to the poorest of the poorest and places we go to the most disadvantaged places that is my calling you know god sends me to places where other people do not want to go that is the calling of god upon my life so when we our heart beat is that when we go on crusades when we go to wind souls when we go to mentor pastors we go with equipment we go with something we can leave behind so the glory of god there was a church we went in chigumba and this they went through those 30 days fasting and prayer one of their members got international invitation so many miracles that god did and the man of god confess that their prayer life was going down so really prayer jumpstart proved its name because the whole church the whole neighborhood was ignited in a place of prayer the other ministry we visited in um in uh, in in um in uganda as well they testified of so many miracles god has done in their lives through the book and through the prayer manner like i shared earlier Prayer points are not absolute. It's just things, to, they are pointers that encourage you in the place of prayer. Pastor Colin, God bless you. How is Ireland? God bless you, man of God. Uh, we hope to come to Ireland very soon by the grace of God. Amen. So people of God, today we are looking at prayer methods. And um, I think that is page, um, I don't know what page it is. Yes, we, we're looking at um, in prayer methods. And I just put it like, I'm, going, I'm just going to read about three different kinds of prayer methods. Number one is your quiet time and your time alone with God. Amen. You know, when I was growing up in deeper life, you know, as a young girl growing up in church, we don't wear earrings, we don't wear jewelry, we don't wear trousers, you don't do makeup. But I was, it was great. Even when others left the church as young people, I remained in deeper life because I just love the way they teach. And the fact that many of them thought I wasn't born again because they were like, um, Pastor Gochiku's daughters are not born again because all three of us were all, you know, they were like, they, there was this thing about when you look, you know, if you're one of those that are from the old school church, you will know what I'm talking about, the segregation, the born again within the born again church, praise the Lord. But the good thing about all those fundamental churches is that they gave us the foundation, the tenacity, the strength in which today we can differentiate between, between what is good and what is bad. We can, we have a, the spirit of discernment. They taught us patience. They taught us so many important things that in, that is lacking in the church of the 21st century. These are things like when people say church shouldn't be more than one and a half hours. I was in a church where church is almost three, four hours and nobody's in a, in a hurry to go because when you leave early or when you show any subordination, it's as if the next day you're going to hellfire. So all those things helped us in the walk, in, in our walk with God, and even now that we're even knowing much better, these things cushion and create um, boundaries in our lives. That's why when you see, you can see three people that say they are born again Christians, but you always see the disparity in their foundation, how you gave your life to Christ, where you gave your life to Christ, who your mentors are, the people that raise you in the place of prayer, in the place of the study of the word of God. This is very important. Like on Saturday, on Sunday, one of my um, my mentors and my spiritual father was in was in London, so I had to go all the way to Dagenham to go and see him. And when I got there, that's my foundation, Christ Apostolic Church, you know. And they were praying, you know, this kind of prayers. Everybody's shaking their head, and that's where I came from, you know. In London here, we used to have 72 hours fasting and prayer. We pray, 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 pray. And it was in, in, in Christ the Apostolic Church, when there is a situation, we gather, we don't stop praying until we receive a change of story. You know, when a situation comes into the church, they call the prayer. You know, my pastor then said, we are not only prayer warriors, we are prayer champions. So that was where God built me in the place of prayer. Praise the Lord. So I learned how to pray and pray through because I was in a church where one of our mothers and the Lord can just pick up one scripture 
and she can release 15 prayer points from just one scripture. They will tear this scripture and bring so much revelation out of one scripture. And these are things that have built us up in that. So that's why I don't I, I, I still love the old school church because they still have a place in the kingdom of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I, I wrote here in Luke 11 verse 1, the disciples of Jesus asked him to teach them how to pray. So it was obvious for them to ask Jesus, how, do, how should we pray? It was obvious that Jesus was not praying with them. That was the only thing the disciples asked Jesus and it was probably because Jesus never prayed with his disciples. He always prayed alone. It was personal, a private discipline that Jesus had. We had we saw places where he went up to the mountain to pray. The disciples had to go looking for him. That was his own way of of his own discipline. His prayer times with God were private moments. The disciples were fascinated by what he did alone. So they asked him to teach them how to pray. I always tell people that if you spend a lot of time with God in the place of prayer, you will not need to spend a lot of time when you're casting out demons. You just speak the word and, and the enemy takes off in the name of Jesus. Augustine Brown and Mubarak, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Rebecca Peters, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Grace, God bless you. Florina, God bless you. Um, Suresh, thanks for joining us. Hallelujah. So alone with God is very, very important. You know, when I was growing up, it was like a rule of thumb. In the morning, if when you wake up, they tell you that if you know you have to go to work at six, you wake up four in the morning, have your quiet time. Quiet time was like was like the main thing. But today, many some people don't even have quiet time. We are under grace, yes. But I believe that prayer discipline helps you plan, helps your your Christian journey. I'm I believe in discipline. It's my foundation. Praise the Lord. So I would always wake up. When I was growing up, we used to be on our knees, you know. You, you have that prayer posture of being on your knees during your quiet time. But now I sit on my bed, even with my kids, we all sit around me on the bed and we begin to share scriptures. We begin to pray together. And I always, and this is how, when I was growing up as a child, praise the Lord. When I used, when I was growing up as a child, how we used to start prayer. My dad, I always tell people, I'm still going to write a book about my father. He was a man that held his family in the place of prayer. He was a man of integrity. I always say that a man that leads his children and his family in the place of prayer, that man, go and check his children. No matter any nation they find themselves, they are always outstanding. And I remember as a child, we used to all come together. And the first thing my father would say is, if I bear iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So in my family, that's why I'm close to all my siblings. Each and every one of us would confess to each other what we have done wrong to each other. That was in our corporate family prayer time. And we're still looking at... Um, um, alone with God, quiet time, praise the Lord. I don't want to divert. I'll come back to, to family, but it's quiet time could also be with your family. And then I would confess what I did to my sister. Maybe I took a pencil. Maybe I said something negative to her. And I would even see my dad say some things he did wrong to my mom. And my mom too would confess some things she did wrong to my dad. And my dad would say, and Susanna said this and I wasn't happy. And my mom would say, sorry. It was so, it was so wonderful, you know, that as a family, we confessed our sins one to another. And then my father would now lead us all in prayer. We'll all ask the Lord for forgiveness. Let the blood wash us and cleanse us. Then we go into worship and then we go into um, the word and we go into prayer. That was the standard that in the in the nuclear family I grew up in praise the Lord that was the that was what I received as a child you know but today with our society you hardly see couples pray together you hardly see family and people come because I realized that what kept my parents close people knew my parents they were like Bonnie and Clyde they prayed together and I still have my father's diaries where he would write out his prayer time with his wife. You know, my dad and my mom, they'll pray together. They'll have revelations together. And when I go through the um, their library, let me just put this on silent. Praise the Lord. When I go through their library, I remember a man that came to see me that he needed deliverance from um, the spirit of anger. 
So I told him, I'm sorry, I'm, you don't need deliverance from the spirit of anger. You need to go for anger management class so that you can learn coping strategies on how to overcome anger because anger is a spirit. And when that spirit comes upon you, if you do not have coping strategies, you're already a born again Christian. So all things are made new. It's a different thing if you don't know what you're dealing with. But as a man that has anger issues and you're dealing with your, your family, you need coping strategies. And he went for the anger management class. I connected him in Greenwich where they hold such classes. And to the glory of God, his home is standing. Not everything is spiritual. Even if, even if many things are spiritual, there's still the physical things you need to do. I'm a psychiatric nurse. And I know that sometimes I see some ministers of God, I can already diagnose depression in their speech. I can diagnose um, 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 so many things that is going on in them. They are so low because maybe their expectation in ministry is not is not what they are saying. So you could see that from their preaching, from their language, from what they are doing, that these ones need help. Praise the Lord. So quiet time alone with God is a time you spend with God, you liaise with God, you tell God, things about your life father show me tell me you know why do you know a lot if you see a man a woman that doesn't have quiet time or meditation with god these are people that don't want to confront themselves because in the place of your quiet time you are confronting yourself you are confronting your work with god yeah you yeah you're, you're taking stock of your destiny how far have i gone how far where i am where am i with you because in the in the in your quiet times when the holy ghost speaks to you expressly it is where you are naked before god it's where you are exposed before god before his spirit and he begins to deal with you on issues of your life so if you are listening to me or you listen to me afterwards and probably you no longer have your time alone with god it's time to go back i remember there was a time I was just full of indecision in my life. I was like, Lord, you have given me a, um, I don't know about some people, but God always gives me a manual. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. And I'd come to the end of the assignment he had given me. I just took myself over to Ashburner. I went there for two days and I just, I just sat under the presence of God. And I said, Lord, speak to me. Lord, show me things. And I received so much from God. And I drove all the way back. I went alone. I paid, I stayed in the hotel, I did prayer walks in the middle of the night, I went to the um, chapel there. There are so many prayer retreat places because sometimes in your house with the children, with the husband and the family and the career, you could just get lost. So you have to, I always tell you that you have to have a conscious decision in this, especially in, in, the, in, in Europe, America, to 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 have your time with God because it's very possible for you to, to slip off and suddenly you just find yourself prayerless, disenchanted, um, cynical, um, critical. Those are all symptoms of prayerlessness. When you see people that are over critical, everything, they have, a, they have an answer to everything. Go and check their prayer life. Go and check their time alone with God. You'll see that there's dryness. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Praise Chooks. Thanks for joining us. Daniel, um, John, he said, I'm a pastor in Christ Embassy for 13 years and has been a member of since. But till tomorrow, I keep telling people that I love the foundation, the discipline, the holiness, consciousness, the read your Bible and pray everyday culture. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, like I remember when I was in Christ Apostolic Church, many of my friends, when they come to church, they're like, Izzy, what are you doing here? Because they think I should be in a flashy, flashy church. And I was in a church that wears long skirts. And I always love these mothers and the Lord. They don't, they can't, they, they don't have any theology or big Bible. When they begin to speak by the Spirit, they will speak in vernacular language. They will tell you things that you know that it can only be the Holy Ghost that revealed it to them. And these mothers, when they pray for you, like I tell people that, you see this head, I have received so much prayers from holy people. I call them holy people because these are widows. These are mothers that all they do with their life is pray. They call them mothers of prayer. These are women that 
like I always tell people, and many people that know, I have a lot of mothers that oversee me. I have fathers in the Lord. You never see them on my page. Some of them are not even on Facebook. Some of them can't even speak English, but they have their eyes on me. They have their eyes on my calling. There are those that I'm accountable to. My ministry is accountable to them, and they are interested in everything that concerns me. If you're in a ministry and you do not have such people in your life, and you do not have such people who oversee you, who speak words over you, who speak, sometimes some of my mothers, they call me 3 a.m. in the morning and they tell you, bring out your Bible, bring out your anointing or place your hand on, the, on your head. And they begin to decree and pray over you. And they just tell you, okay, good night. Because God will bring your situation before them. Praise the Lord. And I will explain why these things are important. Because for God to move on earth, it doesn't matter your, where you are. Prayer is a prerequisite. And not just prayer, voluminous prayer. Praise the Lord. That is what we have on quiet time and alone with God. Number two, which is a very powerful prayer, agreement prayer. Praise the Lord. This involves when two people, or more come together and agree concerning issues. This is why it is important to have prayer partners. They tend to help and encourage one another to pray concerning issues. Jesus said in Matthew 19, 18, 19, again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Edwina, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. I remember when I wanted an office here in, Wool in Woolwich. And this office, they told me that I was number 33 on the list. There was no way I was going to get that place. So one of my mentors in the Lord, he runs a ministry called um, um, Peculiar House, House. So I said, Pastor Tosan, I want this office. And he came to my, and he came, and when he came, this office you see here was a dump. They didn't want to give it out. So we came together and he said, I stand in agreement with you, faith to faith. We stand as one body. We stand in the unity of faith. And, the, and he said, Father, your daughter needs this for the kingdom. Your daughter needs this as a feeding center for the kingdom because she needs it and the desires of the righteous shall be granted. We decree this place belongs to Face of Joy International. Child of God, within less than three days. You see, it's very important when two people come together in strong faith. People that believe that there is no way God will not hear them. If you see how we got this place, it was a miracle. And within a week, they cleared out everywhere, put the carpet, repainted, and gave me the key. Even the person that, he was the very person that told me that I was number 33 on the list, was the one that gave me the key to move in. Praise the Lord. And they even gave me one month free rent. Praise the Lord. That is the power of prayer of agreement. Prayer of agreement, that's why I tell people that, that's what we are called the body of Christ. Why is it the body of like the gift God has given me is different from the gift God has given another person? There are some people God has given a financial anointing. When you're having issues in your finances, they pray for you, money begins to come. There are those God has given a healing anointing. When they pray for you, no matter the sickness, whatever you're going through, healing comes. There are those God has given the grace for the fruit of the womb. Because many times God gives graces in the places where people are most attacked. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, when you see a minister or someone that has a passion for something, and they pray a prayer of agreement with you, I'm telling you, heaven honors them. And I pray for each and every one of us. May the Lord lead us to people, the right people, whose heartbeat is after the kingdom, whose heartbeat is to see the kingdom of God established, whose heartbeat is souls, whose calling and the anointing upon their life is pure and undefiled in the name of Jesus. God bless you, Edwina. God bless you. Hallelujah. So we see agreement prayer is very powerful powerful and it yields tangible results. Sometimes when I have serious situation, I pick up the phone, I call a sister or a brother and I say, let's agree in prayer. 
And I'm telling you, God always shows up in the name of Jesus. Now, number three is corporate prayer. Amen. Corporate prayer. I hear people say, um, I don't have to go to church. I can pray in my heart. It's not scriptural. Praise the Lord. The Bible makes it clear that we should not forsake the gathering of believers. There's a place for you to pray alone. But there's a place for you and I to come together in one accord to pray together. Even when you look from the Old Testament, even into the New Testament, praying corporate prayer has always been a fashion, has always been a norm in the church of Jesus Christ. More and more, yes, there's a place for internet ministry. We bless God for that. And I tell people that the internet, the social media, if the Lord opens your eyes, it is the new TV. Many people don't watch all this Sky TV and all whatnot. It is social media. And I was speaking to a woman of God who says, I don't come on Facebook. I don't this. I said, look, you do not. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. If we do not take charge of the social media and the things of God, by the time you will catch up with what is happening in the world, it will be too, it will be, you will, you will find yourself struggling. Praise the Lord. The time has come for believers. Don't say, oh, there are many people doing prayer programs on Facebook. Yes, let them be many. God will still give you your tribe. Don't say, oh, there are many people that are talking on Facebook. I don't want to join them. Let them be many. The more, the merrier. Praise the Lord. A day will come when somebody will be going through so much. It is your message that will save them. It is that word that you are speaking that will give them life, joy, peace, that will cause them to, to rise up from their dry bones and begin to walk. And peradventure, God may ask you, what did you do with the talent of social media that I gave you? Were you using it to just be commenting on, on, on what is happening all around you? How did you impact your world through the mediums I provided for you? Praise the Lord. Before we had Bibles, all they had were parchments. They had snippets of the Bible being distributed here and there, but they made the most of it. Praise the Lord. When you look at them, I think it was one went to Edinburgh. The man that wrote the Bible, uh, that translated the Bible, the minute after he translated it, he did everything, he was killed. Look at the fire he used to make sure that the people that have paid the price to make sure that you and I can have a complete Bible. Some have written it in different versions. So that life, so that serving God might can be much easier for us. I pray that every gift and talent that God has given us, that we will use it to his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I wrote here concerning corporate prayer. All through the Bible, the call for corporate prayer stretches from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Corporate prayer brought resounding victory to the Israelites as well as the early church. Apostle Paul admonished the church not to forsake the gathering of, of believers. Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says, Let us consider one another in order to stir up the love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as, the, as is the manner of some, but exalting one another so and so much more that you see the day approaching. When we pray corporately, we achieve more. Praise the Lord. The Bible says and one will chase a thousand or five will chase a thousand and, um, and, um, and ten will chase ten thousand. The more we come together to pray, the more God moves. The Bible says, I think it's in the book of Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. And what happened? More was being added to them. Show me a church that prays. And I show you a church that carries power. Show me a church that prays. I don't know if you see all these um, contemporary churches. You come to church. You know, it's all about um, pray and um, they sing, sing, sing. There's no time for prayer. It's amazing to pray in the spirit. But can you pray the scripture? Praise the Lord. Can you pray the scripture? When you pray in the spirit and you do not know the scripture, you are shortchanging. You are, you are, you are, the, word, the weight of your tongues is very light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So we see that another place we can see is 2 Corinthians 1 11. This was Paul speaking to the people. I think this is ESV version. You also must help us by prayer so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessings granted to us through the prayer of many. When many people pray, blessings are, Paul was saying that the blessings they are receiving is as a result of the prayers of men. When Peter was held, it was the prayers of many that delivered them. There are many people that have died today. Peradventure, wasn't, there wasn't enough, people were not praying enough for them. Amen. There are situations that require corporate prayer. That's why it breaks my heart when we say interdenominational ministries that bring up days of prayers, that bring up things, things about prayers. No, my church does their own. There is no church in the kingdom of heaven. Praise the Lord. There is no church in the kingdom. If God gives you opportunity, let's gather together as one body. When we see corporate ministries, when they call National Day of Prayer, please make time and go. No one church has all the anointing. You know, there was a day a lady was asking me, what do I do? I said, I'm, I, am, I run a charity face of joy, blah, 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 blah. And she went like, oh, I would like to go on missions with you. I said, that's fantastic. She now said, okay, who will sponsor us? I said, you will sponsor yourself. She said, eh? I, was, I said, yes, you will sponsor. I sponsor myself to go. He said, no, I cannot go. So you see that many times people don't want to pay the price. You know, it's, it was a while ago someone was teaching me about what churches do. Because they wouldn't want church A to attend church B's program on a particular period, every church will put a program on. And it's a strategy to prevent other people from attending other people's program. May the Lord deliver the Pentecostal church from their madness in the mighty name of Jesus. In America, there are some churches that close down on, on, over, on, over the summer. Over the summer, they close down their ministry so that families may spend time together. They close down. I, I don't know if any African church would do that. Over the summer, they'll just say, you know what, people are going on holiday. It's time for us to spend that time to go out to evangelize, to, um, to do things for our community. And then they all reconvene when the children come back to school. Some churches will be thinking of how much tithe and offering they are going to lose. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Joel 1.14, just to tell you a bit about how they consecrated a, a fast. It says, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to where the house of the Lord, your God, and cry out. You can see the specific instruction. Consecrate a fast, number one. Call a solemn assembly, gather people, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land. They didn't say gather them to their houses. No, gather them into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. These are spiritual principles that yield everlasting results. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I just pray that these three places have lifted up for us alone with God. And Joel 1.14, which um, Joel 1.14, that is a consecrated fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land. You see, no matter how many churches we have, we still need ministries. Praise the Lord. When you see ministries that hold programs and the Holy Spirit leads you, go. From a very young age, when I was in England, I used to attend Maurice Cerullo's conferences. I don't joke with it. I attend Maurice Cerullo's I remember I keep telling people, it was in Maurice Cerullo's conference that I had one man of God say, go to the house that will make those that has been in this country for many years. Say, how, 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 how did you get it? And God did it. It's not that I went there because I was looking for, I've never served God for what God can do for me. Maybe because of my background or how I grew up, I've never served God because I'm looking for bread and butter. It has never been, I, I serve God because I love him. I serve him because I already know he would do all things for me. I serve him because I want to know him more. I serve him because he's my mainstay. I've, no, I've known nothing else but God since I was born. I was born in church. I, all I know in my life is 
church home, work home, church home. Yes, people can say we are boring. Yes, I'm boring, but I'm, I love every minute of my time with God. I, you would hardly see me watch TV, not that I don't like watching TV, but maybe my background, a deeper life, when... The, even when deeper life said don't watch tv we still had tv in the house but as you get to serve god you begin to streamline what you need to hear and what you don't need to hear because you're going when you're going when you're going forward you you have to there's some things there's some things you just have to let go of yes you can listen to the news but don't spend time watching nollywood and home movie and all these things that just defile your spirit no spend time and growing in wonderful things like now I just came back from swimming. I went swimming at nine o'clock. Before coming on air, I went I went to spend time in the swimming pool. I, I went to the sauna. I used the jacuzzi and I'm here. Do things that will be, you know, this body has no spare part. This body is the body you're going to use to serve God. Look after it. Go for a spa. Invest in yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't spend time chatting, chatting on the phone. When it's not necessary, rather spend time and ask God, Father, what is the manual for my life? Time alone with God. Corporate prayer. Agreement prayer. Pick up the phone. If you don't have people that you can agree with, ask the Holy Spirit, Father, lead me to somebody whom I can speak with, who can mentor me in the place of prayer. I have a few people. I have some mothers who are in their 50s, 60s, who I mentor in the place of prayer because they see the grace of God in my life in the place of prayer. And they're like, woman of God, I don't pray anymore. I say, come, let's, there's no shortcut. Let's begin to pray. I myself, there, are, there, there, there was a time in my life when I wasn't praying. I was going through some of, I had a scripture the Lord gave me. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. And I will stay in the presence of God. I will just sit and I will cry. And I will say, Lord, show up for me. And because I never left his presence, Suddenly, something kick-started in me. And I went back. And that's why I love the fact that we are born again Christian. That's why he said, my enemies don't laugh at me. Though I fall, I will still rise. God has invested so much in us that it is impossible for anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord and the Lord will not save them. The Lord will save us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Today is day 14 of our prayer and fasting. And we're going to go into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope some of you have downloaded your book. I pray that the book will be a blessing to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Bible reading and meditation is from Revelation 12, verse 1 to 17. Amen. That's a very, very long scripture, but let me read it very quickly. You know, I like Bible reading and meditation because it gives you time to because for everybody, it's different what God wants to speak to you about. Amen. And when you read scriptures, it helps you to pick up prayers from the scriptures. And that is one of the, that's part of what the prayer manual is all about. It's about as you read the word, you pick out scriptures from it. And, and it begins to minister to your life. The Bible says, then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. I saw a woman clothed with a sun with the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and she cried out because her labor pain and, in, and the agony of giving birth. Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns with seven crowns on his head. His tail swept away one third of the stars in the sky and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman. Look at this dragon. Its tail alone pushed one third of the stars to the earth. That is how powerful this dragon is. The Bible says he stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour the baby as soon as it was born. The Bible says she gave birth to a son who was to rule all nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place to care for her for 1,260 days. 
Then there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And the dragon lost the battle. And he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent, called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across heaven. This was the war that took place in heaven between the devil and, and, and God. It has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. The one who accuses them before God day and night. And they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as they were afraid to die. Therefore rejoice, O heaven, and you that live in the heaven rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. When the dragon realized that he has been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. And she was given two wings like those of a great eagle so she could fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness. There she would be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time and a time and, and a time and a half. Then the dragon tried to drown the woman with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth. But the earth helped her by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that gushed out of the mouth of the dragon. And the dragon was angry at the woman and declared war against the rest of her children and all who kept God's commandment and maintained their testimony for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Do you know why I'm reading this? Many times believers ask, Lord, why am I going through things? Lord, why am I going through trials? Why am I going through persecution? Why is the enemy after my case? Why am I going through sickness? Why am I going through trip? Why, why, is, why, why are my children haywire? Watch this scripture. The devil spat out water to drown the woman. But the Bible says the earth helped. Amen. By opening its mouth and swallowing. So the enemy will strike. But God always gives us a place of protection. This woman was pursued by the devil. But the Bible says that a place was prepared for her, for her protection, for her shielding. Hallelujah. So I'm here to tell you as believers, that is why we pray. We pray because when we pray, we receive protection. We receive, we receive shield from God. Amen. The Bible says, when the dragon that he was he pursued the woman that had given birth and this woman was giving eagles to fly i don't know what is pursuing you in life i don't know what is what is going on in your circumstances but when you look at the scripture all you need to say is a father the same power that gave this woman wings to fly let that wing father i receive wings to fly out of my predicament out of my situation out of my circumstances in the mighty name of jesus we are saying how this woman overcame how god helped her because anything you see in the scripture you can apply it in your life the bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them from them all the bible says that the devil when he saw he couldn't get hold of this woman he went after the seed of the woman the other children of and the bible did not so only that he said and all not so praise the lord and all who keep god's commandment and maintain their testimony of jesus christ that is why the enemy will fight you fight your children fight your marriage fight your testimony fight the word of god in your mouth because he wants to spoil your testimony he wants you to give up on obeying the commandments of God. He wants you to give up on speaking the truth. He wants you to fall away into sin and say, you know what? I can do it anywhere I like. He wants you to compromise your faith. That is why the enemy is attacking. But remember that he that is with you is greater, bigger than he that is in the world. 
is Satan could not overcome God in heaven. Satan cannot overcome you because in him you live, in him you breathe, in him you have your being. When you know that the same power that is in, in God is in you, the devil will try. That is why you could see that he spat out water. He wanted the woman to drown. Sometimes you find yourself in drowning situations. Ask for help. Say, oh, Ed, open up. Open or swallow every river of, of, of challenges that have come into my life. Swallow it in the mighty name of Jesus. We could see also this, this chapter can also connote, you know, when we saw um, Mary and Joseph moving from uh, to Egypt, looking for where to have, um, to Bethlehem, where to have Jesus. To an ordinary person reading the book of Luke or reading the um, 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 the gospel will say, wow, this was just a challenge. But we could see what was going on in the realms of the spirit at the birth of Jesus Christ. There was war over his life. There was war to kill him. So when we saw Herod moving out to, to kill every child under the age of two, the power fueling Herod was the dragon. That's why the Bible said we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The power that, that was pushing Herod to tell the three wise men, when you find where this um, king was born, come and let me know. But an angel appeared to them, to the three wise men and said, go by another way. This was the war that was taking place while Jesus was being born. There are, that's why I always tell people, always thank God for the invisible battles that he fought for you. You don't know where contentions have been made over your life. You don't know where contentions have been made over your ministry. You don't know the invisible battles. God, you're just seeing things happening. When you see maybe your manager or you see your friends or you see family members rise up against you, there is a spiritual battle going on underneath. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the woman received help. May you receive help in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lillian, God bless you. Laura, God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. The woman received help. Anytime you make up your mind to serve God, hell will come after you. The pit of darkness will come after you. The enemy will send his agent after you because the enemy is trying to get people to water down their salvation. They are looking for people that want to do any, anything goes. But today, the Lord said to us, and he's still speaking, that he's raising up a firebrand of men and women who are unapologetic about their call in God. Those who will look at the enemy in the face, who will look at long-standing religious bodies and pull down the structures they have put to put people in bondage, break it, and set the captive stream. God is raising up radicals. God is raising, bringing back the prodigals. I was speaking to him. There was a young man that came to my office this morning and he said, woman of God, I think I'm, I, I'm receiving the calling. I said, fantastic. I said, God is bringing all these bad boys to come and serve him. A lot of them are changing in a rapid speed. Praise the Lord. God, God is bringing back the bad boys because they've gone, they've done it all. They've tried it all and yet God is boxing them in corners. They are coming. He said, he's just, that once he's settled that he's going to go to Bible school. I said, fantastic. Nobody preached to him. You know, he used to come here for Bible study. You know, some, some people are in church, one leg in, one leg out. He said, I think I'm receiving the calling. I was so excited. I said, God bless you. When you're ready, we are here for you to stand with you. We're already lifting you. God is bringing back all those bad boys because God will take them to their Waterloo. God will put them in a place. That will, that was like every knee shall bow. All this pride, I can't take it, I can't take it, I can't serve Jesus. What is what is all this Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? They will all come to their knees. Amen. God is going to put a distaste for sin in their life. All the things, all those vices that made them feel that without it, they can't, I can't serve Jesus because of my vice. God will give them a distaste for it. As you and I stand in the place of prayer, as you and I decree in the place of prayer, some of them will be giving their lives to Christ in their room. You know, a friend of mine was telling me how a man gave his life to Christ. He was, he was, um, he was married with family, but he was doing all kinds of negativity. 
He was with his friends. You know how all they, they were in a yacht with girls and women and all what, 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 what. Next thing, he entered a trance. In that trance, he saw hell, he saw heaven. In the midst of the party, their championing and all, all of that, he packed his load and ran with the next flight back home to his wife and children. And he said, I'm back. The wife said, no, 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 he's not. One week, he didn't step out. Two weeks, one month, two months. The man and his family are now carrying Bible everywhere. God is doing restoration and change. Praise the Lord. And God is waking up the grace and the calling of people's life. And they are coming out as firebrand because they receive from heaven. You know, when God speaks to you, the voice of man becomes irrelevant. The voice of those that say, who are you? Who called you? With, get, tell, show us your, your, your pedigree, your days. Let the oil speak. I tell people, it's not about title. Let the oil upon your life speak. If God has called you, those that can discern will know that God has called you. If God, if your calling is genuine, those that, that can discern will know. And I tell people step by step, this journey of salvation is not a hundred meters. It is a marathon. So it is precept upon precept, step by step. Don't be in a haste. Oh, I want to be known everywhere. I want every pulpit. A time will come when you'll be when you'll be so busy, you won't even some 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 invitations, you just have to turn them down. But build up yourself in the place of prayer. Because when God begins to use you so much, if you have not you have not developed a very astute and and, and a strong tenacity when it comes to prayer, you will see yourself running on low battery. That's why you see some ministers. Suddenly they become, they get into the limelight because they have not built themselves, because their foundation in the place of prayer, in the place of word of the word, in the place of humility has not been well established. When they get to the top, already they are not praying. They just pick one scripture. They just blast it for 40 minutes. They give them one massive honorarium. They move to the next. Before you know it, from that they are high horse. They get cut down. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And another thing that I'm seeing again in the body of Christ is that people are ordaining people that are not yet fully, fully mature and exposing them without proper guidance. Amen. I pray that God will cause, even if you are the ordain, you always have mentors, people that you are accountable to, people that, that, that you can say, Sir, Ma, this is me, this is what is going on. You are accountable to. Always have accountability. People that you are accountable to. I have some of my fathers. There's one of my sisters. This is my daughter is a stubborn girl. Because when I hear from God, I say, Daddy, this is what the Lord said. And many times when God speaks to you, he may not even speak to your fathers in the Lord. But you must have the wisdom to know how to, how to put across what God has spoken to you. Not with pride and arrogance but with humility and, and, uh, and strength. Because they, when you hear from God, it's obvious that you, it is better to obey God than man. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. I pray whatever that is coming against you, every battle of your life, may the Lord rise for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take our prayer points very quickly. Prayer point number one, Father, thank you for the victory we have in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says in the same Revelation 12 that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. Say, Lord, I thank you for the victory that I have in the name of Jesus. I thank you because that victory is what has kept me. That victory is what is keeping me. And that victory is what is, what is going to continue to keep me in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I glorify your name for the victory that I have in you. For the victory, for you cause me to, to be victorious in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer point number two. Say, Lord, thank you for in the battlefield of life, you are the man of war. You have given us power to overcome the devil and all his evil schemes in the mighty name of Jesus. If you do not know this as a child, or some people think that it is the pastors that have the power to overcome devil, that they don't have any power. No. The Bible says that he has given you power and authority to as many that believe in him, to them, hey, to them, he gave power. 
He gave power to become sons of God to as many. And he, where that place, your name is nicely fitted. And he said, go ye in my name. Heal the sick. So there is no power, of, and the Bible said, no power of the enemy can overcome you. Say, Lord, I thank you for in the battlefield of life. You are the man of war. You have given us power to overcome the devil and all his evil schemes in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless your holy name. Somebody open your mouth and thank the Lord that in the battlefield, your God is the man of war. He's the one that rises. He's the one that fights your battles. He's the one that equips your hand. He has made you his battle act. He has equipped you for battle. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Because in the battlefield, you are the man of war. Because with you, I can pull down my mountains. In, in, with you, I can uproot situations. With my God, I can scale over a wall. Lord, I thank you because in the battlefield of God, you are the mighty man of war. You are the king of glory. You are the undefeatable God. No power, no man, no woman, no demon has ever defeated you. Lord, I thank you because in the battlefield, Jehovah, the man of war, is your name. Lord, I thank you because you have given us the power to overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because I am more than a conqueror. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Prayer point number three. By the blood of Jesus, we declare and enforce our victory over the powers of darkness fighting our rising in the name of Jesus. We are hidden in Christ. You could not stop Jesus. And so you cannot stop the manifestation of our glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, before you pray this prayer, any man or woman that has a great vision, that vision will be attacked. But when you are going through attack, don't let the enemy tell you that God has not called you. Many of you have heard the story of face of joy. Three times. The battle, this face of joy has gone through so much sorrow. But the thing the enemy has never been able to take away from me is my laughter, my smile. Because I know that he that is with me is bigger, greater, and I will overcome every battle, no matter how thick it is. So you must enforce your victory. You can see the story of this woman when she was birthing Christ. Some of you have dreams, there are visions, there are things God has put in you. And the enemy is fighting the birth, the birthing. The birthing of that. Some of you desire marriage. The enemy is fighting. When you meet a man that wants to marry you, before you know it, the man has changed his mind. Because they do not want you to enter that gate of marriage. Because they know that the, once you get into that gate, the rest is history. I shared with you guys a, 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 the revelation God showed me of a girl about to get married. So women came and tore her wedding dress in the realms of the spirit. Till now she's not married. So you must enforce your victory. Hallelujah. You must enforce the victory Christ has paid with his blood. You must enforce it. That is why we receive revelation in the place of prayer. Because the revelation you and I receive in the, in the place of prayer enables us to pray the right kind of prayer. Hallelujah. So the prayer says, whatever that is standing in the place of your rising, in the manifestation of the calling of God upon your life, many of us have dreams. There are things you have seen God do with you. Many of us have seen, there are, there are things you have seen God speak through you. There are in your books, there are things you have written. The hour for the manifestation is now. So whatever, by the blood of Jesus, we declare, we enforce our victory over the powers of darkness, fighting our rising in the name of Jesus. We declare that we are hidden in Christ. That's because you could not stop Jesus Christ. You could not kill Jesus Christ. You could not stop him from going to the cross and overcoming. You could not stop him from going to the grave and setting the captives free. You cannot stop the manifestation of our glory in the name of Jesus. That which God has spoken over your life. That which God has spoken over your destiny. That which God has written concerning you. Jesus Christ said in his word, Lo, behold, I have come to do that which is spoken about me. There were things that 
have been written before the foundation of this world concerning you. By the blood of Jesus, we declare and enforce your victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Yao, God bless you, Prince Anene. God bless you, Susie Mutanda. God bless you. It was great seeing you on Saturday. God bless you. Hallelujah. Prayer point number five. You're going to say, I command the earth to arise and fight my battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Command the earth to arise. For that woman, when the dragon spewed out water, the earth arose and fought for her. The earth arose. Do you know that you can ask the elements to fight for you? You can ask the trees to fight for you. You can ask the four winds of heaven to fight for you. There are strategies, there are elements that fight in the place of prayer. Amen. Let the wind of heaven begin to blow away every force of wickedness and their agents on assignment to cut short God's vision and provision for your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Let the wind of heaven come on the earth. These are things. The Bible said that he has given us dominion. When, when Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, locusts visited him. Even the fish he named meat. The winds, quails, these were elements. They were, these were things that, that were used to fight Pharaoh until he came to submission. Hallelujah. Until he came to submission. Hallelujah. You can ask the wind of heaven to blow away forces of darkness on assignment to your destiny, on assignment to cut short your journey. You can send agents of darkness on profitless hard work. Amen. I remember, I think it was in the book of, um, and what book was it? I think it was when Gehazi, when um, the Lord blinded the eyes of the people, they couldn't see. Um, the prophet sent them on another way. And when, when the prophet said, Lord, open his eyes, let him see, and he saw the great army. Do you know that we can, you can cause blindness? When Paul the Apostle wanted to preach to the proconsul, and the and Elimus, the the sorcerer was standing in the way of this, this man giving his life to Christ. What did Paul do? This is New Testament. He released blindness. He said, you shall be blind for a time. And the man suddenly, blindness came upon him and was looking for people to lead him. Because that man was on an assignment to stop the work of God. Today, if somebody preaches that, they'll say, hey, and God has called us to bless and not to curse. Amen. They will say God has called us to bless and not to curse. However, you could see that Paul the apostle did not, did not waste time in releasing blindness. That's why you yourself must release blindness. Anyone monitoring your progress, those of them that come online to look for the day you will face pain, sorrow, and tears, and shout, shout, shout negativity. They may the Lord cause them to be blind. Every time they see you, all they will see is the glory of God. Anytime they look at you, all they will see is the power of God radiating through you. Their evil expectation and their wishes over your life will never come to pass. As they wish it upon you, it will happen to them. The more they think negativity about you, negativity will be their garment of praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Paul the apostle took no prisoner approach. He released blindness. Send the man on profitless hard work. When somebody is blind, can they remember how to divert someone to say, don't believe what he's saying? Amen. He knew what he could do to that proconsul because he has experienced blindness. He knew that he wanted to go and kill believers until God released blindness upon him. I said, wow, this blindness really works. Amen. That's why you must not pity agents of darkness. That's why you have the spirit of discernment. When you see people that are bitter, do you know I avoid them because they carry a negative spirit. And many times they are not teachable. They carry a, a spirit of self-justification. I don't stay around jesters. I don't stay around mockers. The Bible says in Psalm, is it someone blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of the scornful or stand in the way of sinners. But his delight is in the, is in the, is in the law of the Lord. There's some people you will not catch. You will not even, you, they, they can't even smell where I am because the spirit I carry is a very fragrant spirit. I do not allow people to, to mess up my mindset. Hallelujah. 
Not that I'm intimidated by them. I can stay comfortably. But on principle, I do not, I do not associate with people who carry the spirit of negativity. I do not associate with people who, are, who teach people the spirit of fear. If you're a minister of God and all you do is encourage people in the ministry of fear, I cannot work with you because there's a way out for a child of God. It is boldness that we use to preach the gospel. I shared with people when I went to, when I went to India, the first night, it was a heavy warfare. It was the warfare that could have taken my life, but God was faithful. It was a heavy warfare. I prayed and prayed and prayed until about 4 a.m. I don't know if you've had this kind of level of attack that even to sleep, you need to hear God. And the Lord said to me, close your eyes and sleep. And then I slept like a baby. And from that, from day one till when we left India, I didn't have any attack. Even the day we had one program, they sent so much rain and the man of God did not tell me until we're about to go, go for the program. The rain moved. We had to now do the crusade inside the church. Amen. Because I told God that you call, God told me that everything I'm doing, I don't hide. I made sure that everybody saw what we were doing because I know that there are people who want to go on missions, but they are so scared. I see some people that go on missions, they don't tell anybody. It's when they come back, they now post pictures because they are so scared that maybe when I go there, something is going to happen. Let me tell you, before you go to that nation, the devil knew you were coming. As you sat in the plane, the devil knows you're sitting. But God protected you. God kept you. God shielded you. Yes, there's a place for you to hide things. Yes. But at the same time, you don't, you hide, you, 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 and you, you keep things from people based on revelation, not based on fear. I don't like fear. I can't stand fear. I can't stand people that are fearful. I don't, on, I don't operate with anyone that, that carries fear because the work God has called us to do, it moves with boldness. Even in the midst of storm, you still have to appear bold. Because one of the things the enemy does is to take away your boldness and begins to make you fidget. And when you begin to fidget, you cannot carry out the plans and the purposes of God for your life. You cannot lead people to the presence of God. You cannot do the work God has called you to do because your fear cripples people. I pray anyone under the sound of my, of my voice whom the enemy has crippled with fear. Receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. Receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the Lord that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of peace and sound mind. He that is with you will keep you. He that has called you will protect you. He that has anointed you will not cause you to suffer shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he always makes provision for the commission in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Prayer point number four. Every invisible battle in the realms of the spirit, I command you to cease in the name of Jesus. I don't know what invisible battle you are going through, but right now I command those battles to cease right now. Every battle against your life, every battle against your marital destiny, every battle against your finances, every battle against your work with God, every invisible battle against your against your, your children, your marriage, your household, every battle against your ministry, every invisible visible battle right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak as an apostle of the most high God. I command those battles right now. Seize in the name of Jesus. Seize in the name of Jesus. Seize in the mighty name of Jesus. I release peace upon you. I release you into your destiny. That which the enemy says you cannot get hold on. That which the enemy has held back from you. Today I command you, walk into your destiny in the name of Jesus. Walk and possess your possessions in the name of Jesus. Walk and possess your possessions in the name of Jesus. I command right now, whatever hand that is holding on to your breakthrough, I command those hands to wither in the mighty name of Jesus. Every voice that is speaking against you, every voice that is speaking 
speaking against your rising. Every voice that is speaking against your moving forward. Every voice that is saying no way God has said yes. Right now, I silence those voices in the mighty name of Jesus. I silence those voices in the mighty name of Jesus. Every mark, every ordination, whatever that is written against you, every written down words. The Bible says, nailing it to the cross, every, every ordinance and everything that is, that is written against you, Jesus nailed it on the cross. By the blood of Jesus, whatever handwriting of darkness that has been written in any place, in any, in any covenant, they have written down your destiny and say, this is how far you can go. Today, I use the blood of Jesus to erase every negative writing, any writing from the pit of hell right now in the name of Jesus because the plans the Lord has for you are good plans. Because the plans the Lord has for you are perfect plans. Because the plans the Lord has for you are powerful plans. Begin to walk in the plan and destiny of heaven for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, who is it that speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded them. Every demonic voice, every voice of condemnation, every voice of your past, every voice of of, of of evil friends that is speaking against your rising. Right now, we silence those voices. We silence those voices in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Prayer point number six. Lord, even in the wilderness of my life, I, was, I receive wings of safety. Keep me pure and holy for your glory in the name of Jesus. Child of God, like I said earlier, our Christian race is not a hundred meters dash, it's a marathon. There will be a time of wilderness, a time when you'll be, you, you, you just retreat things, you're consolidating things. You're going to say, Lord, even in the wilderness of my life, some of you right now are in the wilderness. You're like saying, Lord, there's so much dryness here. I need your strength. I need your help. You're going to say, Lord, I receive wings of safety. Keep me pure and holy for your glory in the name of Jesus. You see, when I tell, when people talk about hyper grace, that all sins are forgiven, I say, listen to me. Even if Christ has forgiven us all our sins, even the future sin, you know that sin has a consequence. You know, as a nurse, sometimes we take, you see people taking gloves, they take um, medication, they take things, you know. Baby Christians do it. But as you grow in God, you don't take anything that doesn't belong to you. It becomes a principle. Praise the Lord. It becomes what? A principle. When we pray, Lord, you know, there's some born again Christians that don't want to hear when you say holiness. They say, I'm the righteousness of Christ. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. They don't want to hear the word holiness. They tell you that nobody can be holy. But if the Bible declares that be you holy as I am holy, we are all work in progress. Keep saying I'm holy. Lord, I'm pure. Father, help me. You know, when you have purity of heart and purity of spirit, like when I mentor young girls, I tell them, look, don't say I'm a strong girl. I can follow a guy to his house. You will go there. Before you know it, you're pulling down your trouser. He's pulling it up. You're pulling it down. He's pulling it up. Before you know it, you will walk out of his house and then you're full of regret. Because what you didn't want to do, you're doing what you hate. Which could have been avoided if you never stepped into that house for the first time. Don't feel I'm a strong girl. Don't say I know how to do it all. No. No, don't give room. Because let me tell you, when a man sleeps with you that is not married to you, men don't feel bad the way we women feel bad. Because when a, woman, when a man sleeps with you, you feel violated because he's not your husband. No matter how much you do, I'm a tough girl, well, 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 he's my partner. We're planning to get married. That's why I see some girls, they have a lot of anticipation. Eh, I, I'm, I'm sleeping with him now. When are we going to get married? When are you going to go and see my father? When are you going to go and see my mother? Why did you need all that? Ask the Lord to help us to be pure and, and, and holy. It's not easy, but by God's grace, it is. It's better for you to be single, pure, and holy than for you to be single and unholy. Every day you're scared. If rapture takes place right now, where will I find myself? You know, I always tell people, I always tell God, Father, please help my work with you. 
Because if I find myself in hellfire, the kind of cane they're going to flog me in that hellfire is going to be very terrible. Amen. It's going to be very terrible. So we have to make conscious effort to be holy. As a young girl, you will know, you will know, where, which house are you going to catch me? Where? How? When I was in uni, I used to wear trousers. Why do I wear trousers when I was in Nigeria? Because they used to have all these cult boys. They used to have all these um, uh, riots. Sometimes they're in the library. Next thing, pack, pack, all these um, cult boys start. You're wearing your jeans. You are running as quick as you can. Then I had a friend of mine. We were both born again. Praise the Lord. Let me share this with you. So we went for, we'll go for a party, you know, because we are born again. We are, we are pastor's kids, but we still want to see what is happening in the party. So we'll make, a, we'll make a vow with ourselves. And I'll tell my friend, she's in, she's in California now. We must hold each other's hands. We must not let go. Because what a guy would do is to separate two close friends. So it so will be, we'll dance together. We'll do everything together so that immediately the party is over. We run back to our hostel. Praise God. You must make conscious effort to avoid sin. Amen. You must make conscious effort. Not that going to party is good, praise the Lord. But these were some of the strategies we were using in uni as young girls, amen, who were very inquisitive and curious, who wanted to see what happens in that in those places, you know, and what they do over there. You know, like the first time I went to a nightclub, I was like, did all these people take permission from their parents to come here? <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. So I always tell young girls, don't think you're strong. You are not strong. This flesh is not strong. What is strong is your spirit. What is strong is your inside. This flesh is very, very stupid. Amen. This flesh can do things that when you ask, how did it happen? You even be ashamed of yourself. So avoid it completely. Like I always tell young girls, they come to me, when you have emotions, it's okay to say, Auntie, I like this guy. I feel somehow around him. Because when you pretend that these emotions are not true, that's how you fall into temptation. Before you know it, pregnancy. Before you know it, abortion. Before you know it, that one step over. Another pregnancy, abortion, another preg. Why? Because you thought you are, you, you are not accountable. Your emotions are not even accountable to anybody. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. That's why we repeat this prayer. Lord, even in the wilderness of life, I receive wings of safety. Keep me pure and holy for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, keep me pure and holy for your glory. I always tell singles, you know the joy of, of, of your wedding night. is not like the one of on your, on your wedding day. You, you guys are just coming to church to formalize everything. Your wedding day, let it be that you're anticipating, you've bought your your victoria's secret everything you set up yourself it's my wedding night won't it be glorious to know that you too can also say i had a wedding night amen let's save the best for the best in the name of jesus prayer point number seven lord today every coven powers marine powers and demonic perseverance I command the sword of heaven to scatter and destroy them in the name of Jesus. Some of you that have dreams where you see people pursuing you, running after you. One of the things I always tell people, is not enough for you to say, woman of God, pray for me. Begin to ask God for authority in the realms of the spirit. So that one, uh, you know, when they are pursuing, you just turn and say, in the name of Jesus, I command the sword of heaven to destroy. They will run. They will say that this person has received new power. So that in the realms, begin to pray that, Lord, in the realms of the Spirit, Father, grant me the consciousness of who I am. Father, in the realms of the Spirit, Lord, grant me the consciousness of who I am. Lord, let me, when, the, when battles come to me in the dream, when battles come to me in the dream, Lord, grant me the consciousness of who I, who I, who I am. Lord, today, every covenant power, marine powers, demonic pursuers, I command the sword of heaven to scatter and destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the realms of the spirit, oh God, let me be a fire brand. Let me be a fire brand. Lord, let me be conscious of my 
of, of who I am in the realms of the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I pray for you. After today, those powers that come to pursue in your dream, those of you that have sex in the dream, or you see a man, you see a constant male figure coming around you in the dream, today God is going to grant you strength. God is going to open your eyes and equip you to battle and destroy all those spiritual accolades, um, spiritual husbands, spiritual uh, 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 um, connections. There's going to be a divine um, breakaway in the name of Jesus. Pastor Mimi, God bless you. Thanks for joining us, woman of God from Milton Keynes. We are praying for your program. It's going to be great. Sonia, God bless you. Sonia Fox, God bless you. Amen. Prayer point number eight. I refuse to, ab to abort my divine dreams and vision in the name of Jesus. This is very important. Some situations will come into your life and the aim is for you to abort your divine dreams and vision. The purpose why the enemy would fight, you could, we could see from where we read that the dragon was angry with the woman and declared war against the rest of her children and all who kept God's commandment and maintained their testimony in Jesus. Your dreams and your, and your, and your vision are God-given. They are God's commandment for your life. Your dreams, your vision, your purpose are not just for you. It is what God has given you as a, as a footprint for your life on earth. You're going to say, Lord, I refuse to abort my divine dreams. There are things you have seen God show you that you will become. There are things you have seen God say concerning you. There are lives that you see and you can see yourself. This is what I saw God speak over my life. Say, I refuse to abort my divine dreams and vision. Father, as I draw close to you, circumstances, situations that would make me abort my dreams and vision, I overcome you by the blood of Jesus. Some people on the altar of marriage, they aborted their dreams and their vision. I always tell people that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was about to be a single parent. She was about to be divorced. Joseph had made up his mind that this woman, your time is because of what? The vision and the dream she was carrying. Many women have lost their dreams, their vision, have lost their marriages because of the vision and the dreams God gave them. But you must make up your mind. What did Mary do? Peradventure, she stayed with Joseph and she was saying, Joseph, how dare you? Yeah, we, did you know that angel Gabriel came to me? She, you know, per adventure, she was busy trying to prove points with Joseph. Joseph could have given her one blood, she would have had an abortion. But with wisdom, she steps aside. I believe that when she went to see Elizabeth, she was going through separation. Amen. She separated herself because when you are carrying dreams and vision, the most dangerous thing you can do is to be with somebody who does not agree with your dreams and vision. The Bible says in Amos 3, 3, can two walk together unless they agree? She stepped aside and I believe she must have been praying with her sister Elizabeth and said, Lord, I didn't ask for this dream. I didn't ask for this vision. You brought it into my life. Father, touch the heart of Joseph. Turn his mind around. Father, do something. And the Bible says in due course, an angel went to visit Joseph. And I always tell people, the reason why the angel could visit Joseph was because Joseph was a God-fearing man. So if a man of God could be thinking of letting go of his wife because of her dreams and her vision, which she didn't bring upon herself, how much more the world we are today. That's why we must never mock. I was so happy when I was listening to Pastor Marvin about separation and divorce and people that are divorced. We look down on them, we, we try to judge them. I always say any divorced woman is a, is, a, is, a, is a victorious woman because it takes strength to walk away from nonsense. It takes strength to walk away from rubbish, from domestic abuse, from sexual abuse, from, 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 from all kinds of wickedness that cannot be named. It takes strength. For someone to say it's over, I'd rather serve God than stay in abuse. Praise God. 
We're going to say, Lord, I refuse to abort my divine dreams and, my, and, and visions in the name of Jesus. I refuse it. No matter the circumstance, that which you have spoken over my life. Father, empower me and grace me to walk in it in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number nine. It says, Lord, let chains holding people captive be broken through prayer jumpstart and the school of evangelism in the name of Jesus. Every chain holding anyone under the sound of my voice captive, I command those chains to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. I command those chains to be broken. Any chain holding your life, any chain holding your destiny, any chain holding your calling, wherever those chains have held you bound, it could be in your mind, it could be in your eyes that you're not seeing what God is speaking, it could be in your ears, you're no longer hearing from heaven anymore any chain that is holding your life wherever those chains have held you today i command those chains be broken in the name of jesus be broken in the name of jesus anyone that has chains on their legs the lord has given you places to go but these chains have kept you stagnant right now i command those chains be broken in the mighty name of jesus every chain that has held your voice for, for adventure you want to speak you want to pray but somehow there's a spirit of muteness that every time you want to pray you just find yourself dumb right now that deaf and dumb spirit i command you loose in the name of jesus be set free in the name of jesus be set free to speak to pray to decree and to declare in the name of jesus so shall it be for you in the mighty name of jesus i want to pray for anyone if you're sick in the body i want you to lay your hands wherever you're experiencing any form of pain diabetes, migraine, any kind of pain in the breast, lump in the breast, all stomach ulcer right now as I'm speaking speaking the power of god is coming down where you are right now in the mighty name of jesus every foul spirit every spirit of every negative power whatever my father my god has not planted in your body has not planted in your mind every kind of sickness be it um arthritis headaches and, and, and poor vision. I command right now, go in the name of Jesus. Every kind of, of mind uh, and confusion, anxiety, panic attack, I come against you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you to lose your hold in the name of Jesus. Father, right now I stand as your servant. The Bible says that healing is children's bread. Anyone that has any kind of movement in their body, I just hear in the spirit, there's someone under the sound of my voice you see something moving sometimes it is moving on your head sometimes it's moving all over your body right now that foul spirit i come against you in the mighty name of jesus what are you doing in that body right now i command you out in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I command affliction shall not arise a second time. Affliction shall not arise a second time in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, any veil that is covering the glory of anyone under the sound of my voice, I command let that veil be broken away in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you enter into your destiny. Enter into your calling. Enter into that place, your glorious, the glorious place. Jesus Christ has prepared for you in jesus mighty name we pray amen you are blessed you are blessed oh my god eh? one hour 31 minutes my goodness child of god i hope you have been blessed i have been blessed let our lives count let our prayer altars be on fire for the lord jesus christ thank you thank you tomorrow is day 15 i'm super excited the half marathon of the 30 days the lord is with you and please 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 Continue to be sensitive in the spirit, and your testimony will spring forth shortly. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And have a great day. Bye. God bless you.